Disclaimer. Warning. Contains discussions of a sexual nature and an accent that may be hard to understand at times. Listener discretion is advised. There's an awful lot of manga series out there that immediately try to entice you with scantily clad women in their cover art or present this out of this world concept to you in the back, only to disappoint you when you realise all the creative work ended there and what awaits you in those pages is a story that not only fails to deliver on its sexy promises, but is really just a carbon copy of the blah blah of the magic blah school you read last week. Disappointments like that are bountiful and if that's your jam then more power to you. But it isn't very often that a manga series comes around making the same promises but delivers on that too. The question is, is that good enough? Ladies and gentlemen, though mostly gentlemen, I bring you my review of Monster Musume Volumes 1-8 to by Okayado. Synopsis Our story begins when world governments suddenly realise that all the monster species from myths and legends are actually real. In their haste to integrate these species into human society, a cultural exchange programme is established, which our protagonist, Kurosu Kimihito, unwillingly takes part in. Several different girls of many weird and wonderful species come to live with them, and infatuated as they are with them, the penalty for interspecies intercourse is dire. And so begins Kimihito's everyday life with monster girls. Negatives now immediately your question to me is going to be, does this manga fall into the same pitfalls as other manga of the genre? Well if we start off with our protagonist, then yes, he is the same kind of uncharacterised every guy that you see way too often in this particular genre. He's motivated by a sense of inherent justice, but rather not have to strain himself, an all too familiar type of character in this day and age. Similarly, some of the circumstances he gets himself into are typical of the genre, perhaps falling onto fleshy pillows and being accidentally seen in a state of undress, or a fact of life in this universe it would seem. There is also an issue with the cast's immediate affection towards a protagonist as nearly every character who moves in with him becomes infatuated by the end of the very chapter they were introduced. At first glance it would seem that this is just another carbon copy manga with wild promises that falls into the same old traps as the rest. But... POSITIVES these are actually some of the reasons why this manga sticks out from the rest. Okay, hear me out. You know how in that magic high school show you saw last week, every sexual situation was more of a tease for the audience, and it tried to focus more on the uninspired battle elements, while pretending to be modest? What have I told you, that there's a series out there that trims all the fat and leaves you with the stuff you came here to sink your teeth into in the first place? Well, this is it. Monster Musume doesn't try to justify itself because it knows that what you're really here for is to see some monster girls and some fan service. By getting rid of all the fluff, it's able to play to all the manga of strengths and deliver on all of its promises. The monster girls in this manga are fascinating to learn about. Every one of them shares characteristics with their animal cousins, and thanks to that it is impossible to pin each girl to a specific archetype. You have Mia, the protectively catty Lemia, Pappy, the childish bird-brained Harpy, and Centauria, the honour-bound centaur, to name just a few. You'll quickly find yourself loving these characters, and you'll come out of the experience championing your favourite. Did I mention the artwork? because it's gorgeous. Okayado is very talented at hitting the perfect balance between being detailed and cartoonish. Each character is very expressive and the sheer variety of sexy situations that occur are similarly impressive. Monster Musume really goes further than most manga are willing to risk, and that really is a standout feature here. The comedy used is particularly effective too. The comedic writing isn't sex crazed and thanks to that the series has this inherent charm to it that is really missing from other manga of the genre. It also dodges cliché chapter concepts in favour of an ever-moving plot. There is no chapter where everyone suddenly decides to go to the beach. The story is either showing a new arrival adjusting to the Kimihito household, or taking some time to focus on the two core themes, the destructive influence the girls' monstrous bodies have on Kimihito's well-being, or the impending decision that he has to make. Sure, there is the odd chapter where nothing of substance to the plot happens, but these all bring something of their own to the table that really helps to make the world in which this manga takes place feel big and alive. In general, the series actually shines when a chapter tells its own self-contained story. These Monster of the Week chapters provide much needed glimpses into the lives of monster girls who are not infatuated with our protagonist, and in doing so develop the world of Monster Musume more and more. Even some of the initial problems to do with the cast and their relationships with each other are resolved later on. Kimihito develops a housewife personality that can be a lot of fun when having to deal with freeloading government agents on top of the students he's already having to provide for. Very good reasons are also given for some of the characters' instant infatuations, which I don't want to spoil. Finally, each of the girls develops a more full personality over time, becoming more than just a sex object. We get to know who these people really are and why they came to live in human society in the first place, rather than living out the rest of their lives in a place where no one can discriminate against them. In summary, Monster Musume is a smutty manga with a heart. It doesn't take itself overly seriously and ditches efforts at modesty to focus on what it does best. It's a series that plays to its artist's strengths and fills a gap in the market that hasn't really been filled until now. And for that reason, I would recommend Monster Musume to anyone who enjoys an honest good day. 
As of the time of this recording, volumes 1 to 8 of Monster Musume are available from Seven Seas Entertainment in English, with more on the way. For alternative manga recommendations, I point you to Godere Sora Nagihara for a superb delivery in the fanservice department. But if that isn't your thing, then give 12 Beast a go. It's another series by Okiado that gravitates towards battles rather than its everyday life counterpart. Hopefully either of those might float your boat. This is kind of my first time doing this sort of thing, so if you'd let me know what you thought about this video in the comments below, I'd really appreciate the feedback. Until next time, cheerio.